guess where I am? I'm right in the middle of downtown Calcutta. <laughs> um, this is Rabindra Sarovar, which I think just means Rabindra's Reservoir. Um, very pleasant park in this teeming anthill of a city. Um, and yet, well, here I am. You can see what it's actually like here, and I'm not faking it or anything. This is real. <laughs> um, this is not exactly representative of Kolkata, but it makes you think, though. Um, you walk down the street in central Kolkata, like I did yesterday, for about two hours, you're walking through absolutely impenetrable, well, seemingly impenetrable, mobs of humanity. Um, the people are very crowd polite. You try, they, they, they will try not to bump into you, but if they do, they just keep going. It's just crazy. If you apologize like a Canadian would for every time you smack into somebody, you'd never get anywhere. So it's just assumed that, of course, you didn't mean to bump into that person. Um, but it was two or three hours of... If you've ever seen the movie Blade Runner, where you see him first walking through uh, postmodern Los Angeles in the retro future that they were portraying, um, it was just crazy. And a never-ending series of random impressions. And people, you walk through these mobs, and everybody that you see seems okay with it being like this. Um, and then you come to Ravindra Sarovar, and... <clears throat> There's not really a lot of people here. Now, what does that tell you about what Calcutta's actually, I don't know, aspire to or um, what's normal for them? What they're comfortable with? It's almost as though the chaos of the Indian city really isn't a big issue for the Indians. And that makes sense, of course, because this is their environment. The Indians have adapted to it in the same way that, say, Russians or um, South Americans have adapted to their environment. You just take a certain outlook based upon the realities of where you are. Our outlook is developed in exactly the same way. I think that a lot of Canadians simply couldn't have tolerated what I did yesterday and I've done several times throughout my trip, three hours of wading through uh, dense crowds, noisy, chaotic crowds. Um, because as Canadians, we don't have to do that. Maybe in rush hour in Toronto, you get something like that. Uh, but that's, that's short snaps throughout the day, and it's, you know, it's just something that we get through, and once we're in our little zones, it's like, whew, thank God that's over. Um, but here it's just a fact of life. So if you can't change it, you learn to like it. Or maybe they never really developed a taste for open spaces. Um, you think that we require these things, but do we? Um, as I say, you'd think that if, you know, the city is starved for space, there's no way to sugarcoat that. And if, you, if I show you the skyline again, over here, What that actually shows is just how densely populated the city is, because you notice there aren't that many super high rises like you see in Japan or China. Um, it's just three, four story, five story buildings, a lot of them very old. Um, and that's the densest pattern of um, population. So this is an extremely densely populated city. Uh, it's not really all that big, actually, but it's just there's there's 30 million people in the greater Calcutta area. Um, you'd think that if they were that desperate for space, this park would be jammed. There's no entry fee or anything. Anybody can come in. But it's not. It's not as though they don't like it, but they don't feel a huge need for it. Um, after three weeks of India, I didn't feel any huge need for it either. I don't feel it. It just happens to be on, on my route. And I, it just was so different from my other experiences that I thought I'd make a video here. Um, but what fascinates me the most is the idea that 
we think we know what the rest of the world is like. And we think that it's cut and dried. Um, because most people in the quote-unquote third world would love to immigrate to the West, we assume that this is just a horrible, desperate place. It isn't. Um, <clears throat> it might be more desirable, I suppose. But, well, you want desire? This is the red light district, one of the biggest in the world. We went there to buy some beer the other day. I see that there. Uh, all the girls were out, and of course, as foreigners, were money bags, so... Um, I don't feel any desire for that, but a lot of people do. A lot of people can't resist the lure of prostitution. Um, the lure is powerful, even though it isn't good for us. I'm not going to say Western civilization isn't good for us, but just because everybody wants to live here, live there, eh, I'm not here, not there now, because everybody wants to live in the West, it doesn't mean that the West is necessarily good for us. What do you think of consumer capitalism? Do you think that it's a wonderful way to live? I don't necessarily. I don't think it's horrible, but it's just another way. And by the way, consumer capitalism is well on its way to conquering India. Does that make it better? Makes it stronger, at least. Um, the Wehrmacht conquered France in six weeks in spring of 1940. Does that make German civilization, Nazi German civilization, better than the democratic French Republic and all the ideals it stood for? No. Just because something's stronger doesn't mean that it's better. Just because something is more alluring doesn't mean that it's better or healthier. And I'm not trying to say that life is better here either. Um, it's just a question of adapting to one's environment. Uh, I would say that the people who live here are probably just as happy as people are in the West. Um, they have as much desires as anyone else does to better themselves, as much desire. Um, but if you think that they're living in a state of unmitigated misery, that you're wrong. You could say that they're, they don't know any better, but if anything, this experience in Calcutta and in India in general says that we in Canada don't know any better. Think about that. <laughs>